Hey, my fun Squarespace creative people. Uh, let's do a quick tutorial on how do we change this search box text. So we have this search block that Squarespace has. We can add this in anywhere, but we wanna change this search placeholder here. We wanna change that to something else. We can't do that through CSS, but we can do that through JavaScript. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm just gonna quickly show you importing this code, adding it in. If that's all you wanna do, you don't care to learn, just use it and let's go. If you wanna learn a little bit more about coding and really get into the nitty gritty of JavaScript, I, I really think JavaScript is for artists and creators because you can do so much with your website. So if you want to learn more about that, I'll walk through the steps. This is a great learning tutorial uh, just about some of the basics of JavaScript. So let's just jump right into it. Let's change this search text. So the first thing I'm gonna go do is go to my uh, blog here, um, find this, the change search block default placeholder text, search for that, uh, and then we're just, gonna, we're just gonna copy that code right there at the top. And I'm just gonna put it into my, let's go back here, we'll just go to settings, advanced, code injection, and just paste it down here in the footer. You could put it in the header, you don't really want extraneous code up in the header loading. It might slow your site down just in the slightest. Might as well just put it in the footer. So we'll just hit save. And you see now it says search me. If you want to change that, I probably don't want it to say search me. Uh, just change right here where it says new text equals. Uh, change that right here. Change it to blah, buddy, blue. Or, I don't know. I'm not very creative on the spot. So that'll just change right there. So just change that to whatever you want it to be. So I'll just change that to search me. And that's it, very simple. So if that's all you came for, hope this helps, take it and go. Remember to subscribe, get signed up to my newsletter, all that YouTube stuff. Uh, but if you wanna learn a little bit more about JavaScript, stick with me, let's sort of dive into this code and talk about what's happening. All right, now that they're all gone, like I said, I really like JavaScript because it allows you to pretty much do whatever you want with your website. It gives you an incredible amount of flexibility where CSS allows you to design anything you want. JavaScript allows you to pretty much do anything else you want with your website. It is incredibly powerful although it's a lot more complicated to learn than CSS. But this is a fairly simple one, so we'll just sort of dive in take it easy uh, and just walk through this step by step. So there are two main things that are happening in here. So we have our event listener right here and our function. So let's just take it from nothing and I'll just sort of build it out as we go. So what do we want to happen? Let's just start from the very basics. Well, we want to change our search me placeholder text. Let's just save so it comes back. We wanna change this search text. Well, what we need to do is we need to jump into the HTML here because there's no way to do it through JavaScript. So let's open up our web inspector. Every website is created from HTML. This is just the content of the web page. CSS styles it, JavaScript manipulates it if we want to. So I'm gonna grab our selector right here, hover over what we want to change and it'll show us the exact HTML element that we want to adjust. And you see we have this placeholder value and this placeholder equals search. So I could change that right here in the browser just to search me, hit enter, it'll change right here. So this sort of tells me now that I can change it right here. Obviously this is just happening for me locally on my machine, this isn't happening. Like if you went to this website, this URL, you'd see it back to search. You see when you hit refresh, all of this goes back to what it normally was back down to search and our placeholder is still search. So what we wanna do is just change this every single time the page loads for anyone, we wanna change this placeholder. Let's get rid of Drew's email right there. Let's change this placeholder equals search. We wanna change that. So what I wanna do is select this through JavaScript, this element and change that. So let's write that function first. So we're gonna do this into a function, right? And I'm just gonna do this. This is our syntax for writing any type of function in JavaScript. And let's create a variable. We'll just say search bar, search bar equals, and then we want to grab this element right here. So we can use this class, search input. I'm gonna use this. So first we're gonna select our entire document and then look right within that document and we're gonna query the selector that has this selector, which is the search input class, so a dot. So this is our same as our CSS syntax right here. So we're querying this selector, that's what we're using. So now we have set this element 
as a variable right here. And so now all we want to do is say search bar, search bar. Because we have selected an input, our JavaScript is smart enough to know that this is an input element and we have access to all of these other things within it. So we can just select very simply this placeholder guy. So search bar dot placeholder equals search me. So this is our function, very simple, very easy. Um, but right now, if we just hit save, nothing's really going to happen because we haven't told our function here to run. There's nothing, there's nothing going on right now. So we need to tell this function to run. So I'm just going to say, do do do. We're going to give this function a name. We'll call it uh, uh, replace placeholder. I forget what I called it earlier. What did we call it? We called it change search placeholder. Let's use that same name change search placeholder. So there, now we've given our function a name, much like we've given this element, we've set it into a variable, we've given our function a name. This can be whatever you want. The, the convention for JavaScript functions is camel case, which is every letter after, every first letter of every word after the first word starts with a capital letter. So you can sort of see what's going on and we'll just call that. So we've loaded the function and now we're just gonna call it right afterwards. So that's what that is doing and something didn't work. So let's take a deeper dive into figuring out why that's not working. So let's jump into our console. So document is not defined. So our document is not defined. So I misspelled document. That is the reason, D-O-C-U-M-E-N-T. Misspelled that. And boom, so there we go, that's working. But I added a couple other things, so let's talk about what those other things are. I could, instead of just saying, uh, creating the function here and then calling it right afterwards, I could say, hey, actually, when the window loads, when all of our HTML is loaded onto the website, let's run this function. And that's a lot cleaner, that's a lot clearer, because if we put this code, let me just show you real quick, if I put this code right up here at the top, paste all this up here and then delete it from down below right here. If we put it in our header, this isn't going to work. And this isn't going to work because we're calling this function. See, it's up in the header. We're calling this function like way up here. So our content, this search bar hasn't loaded yet. So it doesn't know, it can't select it because it's not on the page yet. So what we can do, if we wanted it in the header, if we wanted to create some cleaner code, we could say, let's wait until the page is fully loaded and then let's run this function. And so that's what this first line was. We're saying window add event listener, listener. Uh, so every single time you load up a website, your browser is listening for something. It's saying, I'm, I'm waiting to be told that the content of the page has loaded up. Uh, and this is called an event listener because we like to anthropomorphize things. We've made it we've made our technology have human characteristics and so it's listening for things so that's why we called it that's why we call it a listener so our browser our window is listening for when the dom content has loaded i've added a little link on the uh on my tutorial page not a link but uh some content if you care to learn more about the dom there super fancy super fun so we're adding an event listener called dom content loaded on the window so once the the content of our html has loaded and it's now in a form where we can manipulate it through javascript now let's run this function right there so that's what this is doing it's saying wait on the window, let's wait until we hear that our content has loaded and then run whatever, do whatever we have here is this section, second parameter. And the section par second parameter is our function here. So as we hit save, this will now work in the header, search me. So, but still, I like to put all this code down in the footer. So there we go, that's great. Well, let's do one more little tweak because this isn't exactly what we had. What if we had another uh, search bar? Where is our search? down here. What if we had another search one down here? Let's hit save. And only our first one is changing. So if we had multiple on the page, it wouldn't work. So let's change this 
to be instead of one element, let's do it, make it plural. So I'm going to change my variable. This can be whatever. I could call it that, but this is really confusing to look through in your code and make changes. So I'm going to just add the S to make it clear for me to understand what's happening. And we're going to change this guy right here. Instead of document query selector, just this, this is going to be select the first item, the first element with a class name of search input on the page, which is right here. But if we say query selector all, now we're creating a list. Now this is turned from one element, which was before query selector and single, one element to now I've made it plural and we've said query selector all. So we've now created a list. This is now a list of items. So I'm going to say search bars and then for each of the items in that list, remember this is now a list of every single search block for each of those items in those lists, I want to do something to it. And I want to do the same thing to each one. So I'm going to say for each, it's that simple, for each. And then let's just say, um, as it searches through this list, as we go through, uh, remember our search bars is a list, it's got a number of different items in there. For each one of those items, let's select that specific item and let's give it a variable name. I'm calling it just L, but we could call it anything. This is a variable. So we could just say search bar. That might be clearer. So for each search bar, for each single search bar within our list of search bars, we're going to run a function. And this is just another syntax, another way of writing functions. This is called an arrow function. Uh, now we're going to do what we had before. So we're selecting the variable here that we've set in the list, and now we're changing that. So that is sort of what is happening right here. So do, 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 let's hit save. And there we go, now to search me. And so the only additional change that I made in the code is I've also set this search me text as a variable. So I've called this new text uh, and I've moved this code up here or that string up there. And then instead of this here, I've said new text. So this makes it a little bit easier to just, I can quickly jump in and update that. So there we go, that is the code, that's how JavaScript kind of works if you just a very simple easy introduction to it uh, i hope this helps let me know if you have any questions and take it easy have a good day